want to use the to-do list to list out what we want to do for that particular day. Why we use our schedule to plan the activities we want to use for the whole month or for the whole week. We use our prioritized to-do list to schedule out all the activities we need to do for the day. And what is said scheduling? Can somebody tell me what scheduling is? Finally, what scheduling? Scheduling is planning. Scheduling is planning. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Charity. Yeah. What is scheduling, Gabriel? Scheduling is the act of planning. download something that you cannot use fancy tool but you can't use the tool and you're not be able to schedule appropriately then we said that another tool is the prioritized to-do list which really you should use daily to help you plan the activities which you want to achieve during the day and those activities should be in the order of what priority when we use the priority matrix it will help us, you know, especially to do this particular task. Now, your task, you may want to put them in terms of priority A to F. A being the very important task. So those are the tasks that will help you, you know, meet your objective one as, um, as a staff employed to do a particular thing. For example, you're a salesperson I mentioned earlier on. You might want to put sales call as one of the priority tasks for the day. Um, call call, you know, as another priority task. Um, sending out letters to customers as a priority task because they all help you meet your objective as a sales person. So whatever task is important to you, you might want to put that on the top of your list, of your, your to-do list. So the, the question I have to ask on this, is it based on official work or your own when looking at this priority to do this? Are you looking at maybe from the official angle or your own personal task? Uh, because, well, basically, this is for an office setting. If you're in your office, you won't do that. But if you're at home and you need to organize yourself, you may just want to say, okay, what do I have to do today? Because I also do that to at home, you know. Um, sometimes it's mental, my you know, home. But sometimes I need to write, just scribble some things and what I need to do. Wake up in the morning, chores first, go to the market. What am I going to buy? And I write it behind the list. So I know all the tasks I need to do. Then maybe ironing. So I also use priority, I'm sorry, the prioritize to do list to personalize myself. So you can use this under what situation, but if you're in the office, you can also use this, you know, to kind of itemize what you need to do and be effective at work. So um, before we before we go on, we'll use that. I just need to give you that so that um, you can take a look at what. Data. So it's important for you to know which tasks are important. Today. So let's look at um, some time management strategies. And um, time management strategies. These are strategies or techniques that if applied will increase your time management skills. Mm -hmm. Below are easy tips that will help you. One, 
have a clear vision and set goals. You must have reasons for carrying out the tasks you wish to accomplish. Have a clear vision of what you want to achieve and set smart goals towards achieving them. This will require discipline and commitment from your part. Thank you very much. Can you not explain what you've heard? Well, this tells us about how to go about managing our time. And it says that, first of all, we have to have clear vision. We know exactly what we want to achieve and how we want to go about achieving them. Um, and be realistic about them. And I think that's what setting the goals Absolutely. is talking about. Yeah, so, you can tell me what SMART goals are. The acronym SMART, what does it stand for? Try it. Yes. Um, sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. is, is to achieve what uh, sorry. It's to achieve what you actually want in your customer work. But you have to follow up quickly on your email you are sending to your customers. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good attempt. Who wants to tell me what the acronym SMART starts from? Do you want to try? The first one, S. Okay. Uh, stand for simplicity, measurable, accuracy, realistic, time management. <laughs> Who else wants to try? You need to come for a goal setting class. <laughs> You've been for one of us. You are for our, you're here for our PM personal effectiveness. So you should know what smart goals are. So what does S stand for? So I have to get specific. So whatever goal you want to achieve, first of all, it must be specific. It must not be ambiguous. So ambiguity doesn't count. So you must know exactly what it is you want to achieve. It's clearly defined. So when you have your task, the task must be both specific. So once you accomplish it, you know that it's been accomplished, then you can now exit. Must be measurable. Who knows? Oh, what, you understand what it means by being measurable? You can measure it so that when you achieve it, you can, you know, it's quantifiable in other words. Then it must not be over ambitious. A is a word achievable. We know you mentioned earlier on that some people have a to do list. The to do list is just tasks I cannot accomplish. You just put everything together. So, but it must be achievable, else it's not a goal. They're realistic. T, there is time bound. So you must have a time that you must accomplish a specific task. So first and foremost, in time management strategies, you must have a clear vision. What is it that you want to achieve? Set the goal using this acronym, SMART, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time bound. So if you know that the goal you set, you have a time limit, it is realistic, it can be achieved within the time we have set it. It's measurable and it's specific. You know that you set smart as something you can achieve. Um, another strategy I mentioned previously is to block out time to achieve it. Um, oh, Do you want to read this for us, please? Time management strategies to block out time to accomplish certain tasks. Block out certain minutes or hours of uninterrupted time to achieve certain tasks, especially important and urgent tasks. Place blocks of time for difficult tasks that require 
most concentration during the time of the day. They are most active in their lives. Only that some people are born in the world or dance in the night. Okay. I'm a night person. I won't answer that question because <laughs> kind of scared I have. <laughs> most times, even people wake up and like, ah, thank you, I'm a night person. Mm -hmm. I think this year, mostly I do a night person. So I've been wanting to ask, where do I come in all of this? Mm -hmm. So that's the time the kids are sleeping. Mm -hmm. That night, I do laundry, I do a lot of things in the night. Mm -hmm. Most times, if I sleep, it's late. Mm -hmm. So, how do I get to? Most times, I just wake up and I start doing them. Well, that's fantastic. It's, it's important we mentioned earlier in the class, you know when you are alert. If I get a normal eight hour sleep, I wake up in the morning and I'm very alert. And sometimes in the night, I, in fact, I find that some more nights I'm more alert, you know. So I want to keep very important tasks for when my energy is peak and I will do those things. So, first of all, you must. Identify the kind of person you are. Are you a morning person? If you're a morning person, please keep very important tasks that time. We want we are talking about improving our efficiency and productivity what at work. Whether it's your personal life or work life, you want to um, and make sure that the quality of work you do is high. So you want to keep it for when you're most alert. If, for example, being a mom, you're going back to school and you have some tasks to do, maybe you have some reading to do, you need a time, an uninterrupted block of time which you set aside to accomplish that task of reading or doing your thesis, some aspect of your thesis. So you might, okay, the kids are sleeping. So from 11 p.m. to 3 p.m., I'm active. That's when you want to carry out your very important task and you accomplish that task. So your, the hour is defined, you've chosen a specific time. What do you want to accomplish in the hour? It must be specific, it must be realistic. So let's say you want to read um, 30 pages of a particular book. So it's measurable. So within three or four hours, you must have read 30 pages of that particular book. So if you fall short, of 10 pages, you know that you're falling short. That you have to make up that 10 pages some other time later. So that's how you can set smart goals. It could be your own work. You can also break down your work into bits like that you can measure. So if you're not able to achieve what you've set up, you can now look for another time of the day where you can make up for that. So Get away from distraction. Esther, can you read this for us, please? Um, get away from distractions. You can use a quiet office space where distractions can be eliminated. If you are not able to do so, inform your boss or colleague that you will need some time to accomplish some certain tasks and work towards using that time judiciously. Switch up your phone, turn off your email address. And the television as well. For those who <laughs> are so, you know, blessed to have television in their office, offices, or even at home. So TV is a big distraction for me. So if I need to do some washing, you understand? I will not please please the world. I will put. <laughs> I will put Telemundo. I won't even try it because that will go my day. I won't do nothing. So we need to know what our time wasters are. You know, I need to just avoid them because we are what human beings, we are mere mortals, we are not, you know, almighty God. You know, so we need to know what our distractions are. Keep away from it. Tell people around us, look, we are going to be busy for this specific period of time. And um, turn off your social media, switch off your data so that you're not getting alerts and you not see a beautiful picture of your friends. Ah, what's happening? <laughs> you start looking at all the pictures and it can be a hundred and one pictures. Like we have a friend, like one of my friends, who her job is to take pictures everywhere she goes. And you'll be so fascinated. I have this deadline. Ah, this picture looks good. Pretty what's happening. You're looking at a hundred pictures and it would take you like one hour. So we really need to get away from whatever your distractions are. Take an office space. Do, you, do we have um, quiet spaces we can work? 
your physio have a place you can go to somewhere. You want to, uh, um, Gabriel, do you have, who has some secret place you can go to to work? You might want to find a special place that you do not want distraction, but you must let people know in your office that that's where you will be trying to achieve so and so time. Please, sorry, I, I want to bring your attention to something you said very curiously. You talked about identifying what part of the day uh, do we perform optimally. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the assumption is that you have the luxury mm -hmm. of actually choosing your work to when to do your work. Mm -hmm. for, some, for some people who do not have that luxury, yet you have important things to do mm -hmm. at a particular time that does not align with that, yeah, your own personal time. So for example, in the morning, there are some very priority work you need to do. Mm -hmm. But yet, that morning, you are not a morning person. Mm -hmm. What practical tips can you give such person as a coping mechanism, even okay. though this okay. is not my priority, mm -hmm. but yet I have Thank you very much for that. For me as a person, I was always refer to the tips that I used to overcome some of those things. Um, I realized that I wasn't a morning person. <laughs> and it was as a result of my lifestyle. <laughs> so I found out that um, because I'm very active at night, I don't sleep early. <laughs> it's that, it's like I become like an owl at night, you know, energy just bursts uh, from nowhere. <laughs> and I start doing tasks like, you know, somebody is sending me, you know, do this task. Go to gym in the evening, you know, I walk out. And after I walk out, I just have this huge energy. You know, I start maybe reading, watching TV, washing clothes, ironing, and doing things. And finally, what's happening is 2 a.m. in the morning. And I have to sleep. Then I wake up late in the morning, or I wake up normal time in the morning. I feel a little bit um, tired, not energized, you know, and then. And it takes me till around noon, like Gabriel and this young gentleman, for me to, my energy to pick up. I noticed that, oh, I need to change my lifestyle. So what I did was like, okay, sleep earlier now. So the rather than going to the gym in the evening, go to the gym in the morning, exercise in the morning. So get that burst of energy. So I had to adjust my personal lifestyle to suit the most. So now I find that I'm very active in the morning now as opposed to before. But ordinarily, I'm a night person. I still get energy sometimes in the evening. But in the morning now, I have more energy in the morning to do the morning time because I realize that most human beings are not nocturnal like me. <laughs> and the business they start, and you need to reach people. And it's daytime, and you need to reach them. So they, you must have that adjustment. First and foremost, there must be the awareness that most people are morning people. So you must keep very important work for that time. You must adjust your personal lifestyle to accommodate some very important things you must do during the day. Then for those other things that you can do later, which are also important too, you might want to keep those things for when you have the greatest concentration to, or when your energy soars up. Sometimes after lunch, People's energy will soar up because you just had lunch, you know, and then you're okay. Or a little break in between. You want to keep some very important work for when your energy surges up during the day. Another thing you might want to use to, um, you might, um, you call it energy boosters. You can take chocolates. Chocolates, you know, for, I mean, leading reason, not so much indulgence, you know. It helps you with a little bit of sugar will take your energy up. You know, if you feel your energy is down. Other things you want to do, what to do to kind of walk around the environment to clear your head, get your energy up, get your blood racing, then come back and look at that task. Then you inject a little bit of energy into yourself, then carry out your task. So it's, it's all about personal choices and realizing that look, you need to do this task, you need to do it, you need to have a clear head to tackle it. So, what do you do as a person? What will you do to um, surge your energy? during the hours. You know, um, life is changing. People's attitude and approach to work 
is changing. The management too, they're becoming more supportive of staff. You know, knowing your personal staff is important for your boss to know your personal style of work. So to try to adjust your work so that you're productive at the end of the day. First of all, you as an individual must know your personal style. Once you know your personal style, you want to allow those around you to try to understand it without having to be rude about it. You know, this is when you want to do certain things, or this is how you do certain things. Well, sir, I need to take a break. I need to go to the gym during that. I used to go to the gym in the afternoons um, when I used to work in my previous place. I never knew I had to go to the gym in the afternoon. So when I came back, when I usually come back from the gym, my energy surges and I'm very active and I accomplish much. And then sometimes I also, after the gym, I now maybe swim for like 10 15 minutes. I found out that I was so refreshed. You know, I come back and I face the work. And I achieved so much. So everybody knew that this was what used to give me energy. So they didn't really disturb me during lunch break to have my own time so that I can come back and increase my productivity. I don't know what yours is. Many organizations they understand now that um, <clears throat> your personal life is important to help you to increase your productivity. So they will do everything possible to assist you, to support you. To ensure that first and foremost those personal things are met, like having your health taken care of HMO by being a member of the gym or the social club, having a social life and stuff like that. That will also help you too. So you can also try to schedule these things to into your work. I know some organization, if you do not take your leave in a year, you could be fired. It's important. For you to take your leave, go and refresh. Go and refresh yourself. So you put that also. Then, like some organization, they take it very seriously. Your personal development that forms part of your appraisal. How many courses did you go for this year? What did you learn? Have you improved as a person? You put that in your own schedule, your own personal schedule. Whether we clean more clear you must be able to break them down to accomplish them. So I mean I don't know if that answers your question. No, 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 no. So then who can read that for me? Who hasn't read? You haven't have you read no. charity, you haven't? Okay, why don't you read that for us? Time management strategies. Review of review of to do this weekly planning. We could Recommend your view. Sorry, we could recommend you review your your to do your list weekly plan at the end of your at the end of each week each working working day of the week and strike off tasks that have been accomplished. Thank you. That's it. So we've just looked at our to-do list which we'll have a go at and our weekly planner. Whether we're using any of the tools, whether it's your Google Calendar, your Outlook, whatever it is, you want to look through. So I, I would recommend that you review your to-do list at the end of the day. <clears throat> what have I achieved? What have I not achieved? Drag them out. Chop, chop, chop. Yeah. Those ones that you've not finished, try them the next day. As the next day comes, you want to review your your list according to priority. The tasks that have been left undone, like I said, should be carried over to the following day and may be put as priority on the list. Or you might put it on the priority of that particular day. Now, five, postpone unnecessary activities. Activities are not help you achieve your objectives. You might just want to postpone them for later. But you can totally eliminate all those time-wasting activities which we have um, done, which we've mentioned previously, like um, we said. We've identified some uh, um, distractions or interruptions at work. You've mentioned television. Um, what is yours? Did you mention yours? Mine is actually um, social media. Social media as well. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so if you're very busy, you want to put your phone in your pocket, or you just want to put it somewhere, don't switch it off and it don't <laughs> so that that at least your it's, it's good for you to know your vices, mm-hmm. isn't it? Yeah. Than not to know at all. Charity, what's your um, interruption at work, or what do you think kind of interrupts you from achieving your goal for the day? Social media. Social media. Like, works out. Works out. Social media. Works out. How can you eliminate it? Yeah. By, by putting this phone on something mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. switching off the phone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Apart from social media and television, who else has something quite different? Television. No, that's what I'm Apart from television and social media. What else is your advice? Visitors. Visitors, thank yeah. you. <laughs> Unexpected <laughs> visitors. Yeah. Exactly. What else? What else? Because yeah, there are lots of things. Yeah. There are lots of things that are just, you know, pop up. You know, and then maybe your supervisor just so, sending you, you know, anyhow, <laughs> things related or not to me. That also is the time waster. What else? Mr. Saul, do you have any other? Thing that I mean, if you look at your typical day at work, apart from social media, like Facebook, mm-hmm. apart from your phone, what else distracts you? The other thing that distracts me in the office is uh, maybe a friend mm-hmm. said to pay me a visit. Uh, maybe I was not even informed that I was coming, mm-hmm. only for me to get a call from the reception and somebody on the reception. So, how do you handle that kind of situation? Issues like that. Uh, there are so many times I would tell the reception, tell the person I'm not to control Okay, okay, that's a good one. Tell me not a good one. Yeah, show me the email. Print money, okay. How do you handle your kids now when you know they won't come at the time you're very busy? How do you handle them? When I was working, it was quite different. But now I've been a staying person. I I do of my business at home. Mm-hmm. Um, so what I do is, as in the night time, I switched my energy level time. Mm-hmm. Right from university, I used to be a very active, nocturnal person. <laughs> my roommates would go every time, like, what kind of hell are you? But now, the night time, I do all the things I need to do. And I know if I'm doing them with them around, no the problem. So in the morning, they are off to school. That's when I take my naps. Mm-hmm. And I take healthy naps. Mm-hmm. Because instantly, they are dropping them. Fire has gone. <laughs> <laughs> but I've learned now to let them be dependent, independent on time. So even if they have to do assignment or they need to eat, some of my friends are like, I'm too hard on this kid. I say, ah, because I have my life too, and they have their life. And their father has his own life too. I've essentially this independent and they are really getting it. Okay. So the other one wakes up and is already pulling the younger brother out of the bed. So I think it's been helping me. I've been making them independent on time. Mm-hmm. This year especially, that's my goal. It's been working. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of it, like you said, is about choices, mm-hmm. personal choices, lifestyle um, choices. You need to change that just so that you can be effective at managing your own personal uh, time. So uh, we talked about prioritizing tasks uh, previously. Uh, it's very important. If you are going to manage your time effectively, you might not just want to do every task that comes your way. You might want to prioritize them so that you can, you know, meet your deadlines, reduce stress, have a life. <laughs> you know, that people don't have a life. You see, they're running around the clock, workaholics. being workaholics. I believe we can cut down on being workaholics. You know, we'll be able to manage our time then judiciously.